Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We welcome everyone here to the Kissimmee Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm Pastor Amado Luzbet. On behalf of our congregation, we welcome, we extend our condolences to the dear family of our sister, Jeannie Leotard. We are grateful for this opportunity God has granted us so that we can remember her life. You all have received a program. On this occasion, we gather together to celebrate the gift of life. The 94 years the Lord had, has given to us memories and recollection, experiences, what she has left as a legacy to her family, to her daughter, Pat, and her son, Tony, and sister, and family, and friends, so many here, others who are watching as well on social media, to her church family who has assembled here today. We welcome you. We're honored in many ways because not only as a congregation we come to pay respect and thank the Lord, but we have in our midst many pastors who have also taken time to be here because Jeannie means and has meant a lot to them. Pastors that are accompanied by their wives. I want to recognize these pastors just by signaling out their names. Pastor Goldenberg and his dear wife in our midst, thank you for being here. Thank you for your years of service and the time also with Jeannie and Tony. I want to also acknowledge Aubrey, Tope, grew up here, and knows, of course, Jeannie through those years, and Tony. I also want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Ronaldo da Cunha, accompanied by Dorothy. Welcome. Glad to have you here with us. And I would like to ask, Pastor, if maybe there are some words you would like to say, and then would you open this celebration of life service with a prayer. As Pastor is coming to speak and share and pray, I want to uh, let you know we will follow the program as it is laid out. Thank you. Everyone here in Kissimmee knows that Jeannie was a matriarch here in this church. She touched many, many lives, and she touched my life too. I do not remember one time that I interacted with Jeannie that she was not able to give me some blessing, okay? With her love, her kindness, her grace, and uh, we were really touched because God uh, placed her in our midst. Then we came here, as Pastor Amado said, to celebrate her life. Uh, almost a century. Okay, almost a century. Just six years is short of a century. And she is a very, very well-loved in this church. Then let's have a word of prayer. Our Lord, we came here, Lord, in this very difficult moment when you need to say a so long to one of our dear, dear friends. Jeannie was very special. We thank you to place her in our midst. We never say goodbye to her because you know that you have a special place for her, that we have the hope to meet again and to enjoy eternity together without any influence or, or power of aging, of sickness, of death. And you know that by your grace, Lord, you're going to give this gift to all of us. Then bless the family, bless this church, bless all of us, Lord. We need your guidance, your power, and the assurance that 
you have solution for all of our problems. Then in Jesus' name, I thank. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Blessings, everyone. Condolences to the family. You've been blessed to have Mama Jeannie in your family. And um, it's a, it comes to, as a great loss to all of us at KSDA. God bless you. And we will sing hymn number one, Praise to the Lord. Number one. That's in this book here. to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Oh, ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Join From the Old Testament, I will read Psalms 23, 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the New Testament, John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. On behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Caribbean, otherwise called the Caribbean Union Conference, and on my family's behalf, on my own behalf, I convey condolences to the immediate family members of our departed Sister Jeannie Leoto. 
to you, Pat and Tony, and Pat, your family members, the extended family members, is the Merle, the Smarts, even Norman and Linda and their respective families who have been providing such tremendous support for Sister Jeannie during the later years of her life. Members of a church and community, we share this loss with you. I had the privilege of being Sister Jeannie's pastor a little more than 30 years ago. And it had been a memorable experience. The memories are still fresh and uh, beautiful in the hearts of my family members and myself. I remember those days when Sister Jeannie was an entrepreneur in Tobago and J, J ice cream was a very favorite brand for so many. And I was privileged as pastor to be able to provide spiritual nurture, encouragement, prayers for the success of the business and how it thrived. Sister Jeannie at church and uh, Brother John Paul and Tony, they were very important members of the church. Her, her competencies were utilized to give enhancement to the services of the church and community. And so I am joining with you in this loss. I know Tony has been a significant part of her journey and she has been there for Tony in the good times and in the bad times. But Tony has been a life wire and you Pat, thank God for you and for your family as you transition because Sister Jeannie provided a legacy, a legacy of selfless service, of genuine love for God and for his people. And longevity has been her gift. We thought she never would have died, that she would have lived on until Jesus comes. But God in his mercy and his goodness has said, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, that they may rest from their labors. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, but their works will follow them. And so Sister Jeannie's work will continue to follow her through the lives of Pat and her family, and Tony, and by extension, the other family members mentioned before. May God's peace and comfort be with you all. Good morning, afternoon, everybody. <laughs> so, um, as those of you who don't know me, I'm Andre. Um, people say grandmother, but this was my grandmama. You know, so I, I call her grandmama, but I'm going to read her eulogy really quick and then say some words after. Um, Jeannie Leoto was born on September 15th, 1929, to Elizabeth and Henry Smart in Tobago. She was the ninth in the line of 11 children. Jeannie attended Mason Hall Elementary School and the prestigious Bishop High School in Tobago. She taught at Dillaford Elementary School in Tobago and also Progressive Educational Institute in POS Trinidad. She married John Paul Leotold, my grandpapa, uh, in 1950. And they had two children, Patricia and Tony. That's my mom and that's my uncle. Uh, Jeannie, and her, Jeannie and Paul migrated to the United States in 1965. She pursued a profession in the medical field. She and her family returned to Tobago in 1983 and started a new business in ice cream. A parlor called J&J, &J, homemade ice cream. So really quick, before I keep going, um, this ice cream, <laughs> those of the family might know about it. Uh, you can name your haagen -Dazs, you can name your Bluebell, you can name your Baskin and Robbins had nothing on my grandmother's ice cream. Yeah. If there was one cup of ice cream in this aisle right here, we'll all, I'll be fighting all of y'all for it. Yeah. I love all of y'all, but we'll be wrestling for that ice cream. That's how good it was. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep going. This ice cream company was very successful business. Uh, the delicious flavors of Sunday's milkshakes uh, were the delight of the town. Um, obviously, coconut and peanut was the best one. Um, Jeannie and Paul sold the company in the late 1990s 
uh, to a husband and wife team in Trinidad. Today, the same, the name and the legacy continues. Jeannie and Paul had developed a secret formula, so when Jeannie passed away, the baton to this couple in 2001, the new owners expanded the company, and it is still in business to this day. Eventually, Jeannie and her family returned to the United States and settled in Orlando, Florida. She joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church in, in Kissimmee um, and became immediate family involved in the church activities. She was community service director, Sabbath school superintendent, a teacher, family life director, and she held a host of other church positions. She was revered and loved by young and old, many called her mother Jeannie, a mentor, a teacher, peacemaker, a counselor, who were just a few of her gifts, and many sought her counsel. Jeannie always gave advice, sprinkled love, no matter the judgment, she was never judgmental, always kind-hearted. Sister Jeannie was um, a paradigm of the fruit of, the, of her spirit, and her soft, gentle ways would be missed by all. Jeannie went to sleep in the Lord on April 24th, 2024. She was... <laughs> I gotta skip. We have this. We have this hope that one day um, we shall see her again when Jesus returns in the clouds. Then the Christ will rise, and we who have fallen asleep will rise. I, I apologize, y'all. This is tough for me. There will be no more pain for the former things that passed away. This our hope, this our faith. Rest in peace, Grandma. Amen. I'm going to thank a few people really quick, all right? Um, Lena and Paul Mullins, uh, Norma and Ernest Hunter, David and Lula LaRoche, Sister Merriman August, uh, Juline Sacre, Myra and Bob Valeris, uh, Maureen Daly, Cynthia and Wayne Card, Eva DeFrates. Uh, if, sorry if I'm butchering so many of your names. I love y'all. Um, <laughs> Malisha and Kelly Peterson, Linda and Norma His Hislop, uh, Elaine Lugo, uh, Rick and Catherine Matthews. If there's anyone that I forgot, I, I, I apologize. But um, for my for my family, to the, to um, my grandmother's church family, we really appreciate y'all because you guys were there when she threw thick and thin when she was in and out the hospital, stuff like that. You guys were bringing her food. You were take, bringing Tony food to make sure he was taken care of. So I, I appreciate each one of y'all. And I'm gonna speak real quick. Um, my grand, like everybody's saying, my grandmother, she was huge in our family. I, I always say, I used to call her like she's the one. She was the one in the family that gave the best advice. I used to go over there and like we used to talk, just chop it up, just talk, you know, hours at times. And 98% of the time, I would not say nothing. I would just listen. I would just listen to everything she said because the amount of wisdom that she had and the amount of knowledge that she had. She's helped me through periods of my life that if I didn't get that wisdom, I probably wouldn't have made it, right? You know, that's the type of person she was. She didn't matter where you were from. She didn't matter who, where, what your circumstances was. She gave you love. And I always said she led with love. And that's what helped me. It helped me lead with love, just not my professional life, but work life, everything. If you lead with love and we love each other, doesn't matter where you are from or where you, who you are, that's how the world should run, right? That's how we should be. And that's how my grandmother was. And that's the things I'm always going to remember about her, the wisdom that she just gave me every single time we talked. So, Grandmama, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm going to miss you because I'm never going to forget you. I'm, ne I'm not going to say I'm going to miss that smile because I'm never going to forget that smile. And I'm never going to say that I miss those talks because I'm never going to forget those talks. And I love you from the bottom of my heart, and I know for sure we're going to see each other again. So thank you all. I appreciate it. done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me, 
the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has done. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live. My life, let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. Should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with his blood. He has saved me with his power. He has raised me to God be the glory for the things he has done, for the things he has done for the things he has done. We love you, Auntie Jean. We have several folks who are going to be coming up here. Derek Taylor, Julene Sucre, couples like the Mullings, as well as the Cards. And before they come up here, I realized that some had approached me and said they would like to say something. We realized we've already prepared the program, the service, but we want to give you an opportunity because you also have many memories and times with Jeannie, with Tony, and you want to share. And so we're inviting you that at the conclusion of this service that you would join us at the repass service. We'll have time there to do that. And so at this moment, in the order that I mentioned, we'll have a Kissimmee, Seventh-day Adventist Church Family Reflection. Good afternoon, church. And uh, I just want to say good afternoon to each and every one that is there, especially to the family, to dear sister, to Pat and Tony. I know words is not good enough sometimes, but God's know. He is the one in control, and he will give you the comfort that you need. And I'm here on behalf of the Kissimmee Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Sabbath School Department. I worked with Sister Jeannie for quite some years. I met Sister Jeannie in 2000 when I moved here from California. I think she just moved here at the same time. And we formed a very good band. I worked with her as a teacher 
and as a superintendent. And uh, a few years back, I became the head superintendent, and I would visit with Jeannie, I would talk with her, and she was like a mother. She said, you know, you are one of my adopted sons. And I remember in 2020 when the pandemic hit, I was at Jeannie every, I would say three days a week to do her shopping. If she have a plumbing work to do, I would get a handyman I have to go over there to do the plumbing, to do everything that you need to do. And two weeks, about a month ago, he called me and he said, Brother Derek, you know, I want to eat a piece of cake before I go. I said, so, yeah, you find anyone yet? And I, said, and I said, Sister Jeannie, I'm not looking. You know, if it's God's will that it should happen, then let, let it be. He said, oh, I got somebody for you. <laughs> and I said, yeah, thank you. And then he gave me a name. And I said, okay, I will pray about it. But Sister Jeannie is somebody. She was a dedicated teacher. She was a ded dedicated worker. She always give good counsel. And I remember Tony needs some things and say, you know, Brother Dirk, I want you to come and take Tony go shopping to pick up the things that he needs. And that's the kind of person she was. She was a loving, dedicated, hard worker. And Pat and Tony, I know she's gone. But as in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul reminds us that we don't weep like others do, because there's a great hope. Sister Jean is gone, but you and Tony have the opportunity to see her again. It's just that we got to make it right. She has done her part. It's up to us to do our part so we can see it in that great getting up morning. I want to give you all the comfort. I want, I want to wish you all the comfort that Christ will comfort you. He will give you the desire of your heart, and he will be with you if you call upon him. So take heart that we'll see Sister Jeannie again. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Jeannie's Church Family Church. I am Julene Sucre, but I'll give you a little idea what happened between Jeannie and myself. I was introduced to Sister Jeannie in the 90s when I visited my late sister-in-law. Jeannie welcomed me with open arms and was anxious for me to become a member of this church especially to increase the numbers of her nationality. <laughs> she was an active member in various ministries in this church, community service leader, superintendent, Sabbath school teacher, and others that the brother just spoke of. She was an eloquent speaker with a beautiful singing voice. I had the opportunity to sing with her. Over the years, she was a friend and counselor to the youths of this church. She was a joyful person and had a sense of humor and got involved in current discussions. She was formerly a housewife when she cooked various delicious meals, loved decorating her home and usually dressed with matching colors and was very fashionable. Tony fashioned his mom in dress coats. She loved driving and bought herself a magna beautiful car. We shopped together, attended functions, and had good times together. When Jeannie became ill, she was unable to manage her daily activities, and it was a privilege to support and fulfill in areas needed for her care. She conducted a prayer line with neighbors in her community and taught Tony to read and study his Bible 
also to pray for you and for me. My joy in visiting Jeannie and Tony was to hear that they both prayed for me. I was adopted in her family and was offered protection in the times of storm. Amen? Amen. Jeannie often expressed her love for her family, that is Pat and Tony, her daughter and son, who loved each other very well, and is assured Tony will be taken care of by them and the church family. Amen? Amen. I was fortunate to visit Jeannie with three young people, along with Miriam, two days before her passing. Jeannie became aware of our presence and we worshiped together. She was very thankful. Jeannie was a friend to the youths and they expressing contentment that they visited Jeannie at that time. We are saying goodbye to Jeannie until then, when King Jesus will awaken her to walk the streets of gold. Our hope is to meet her there. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. So you know exactly who we are already, right? <laughs> okay, family and friends, this is a rejoicing time. No sadness. We have this hope that burns within our heart, the hope in the coming of the Lord. When he comes, like it was said before, no more of this. Death will die. So I'm just saying to you today, keep the faith. Keep holding on. On becoming a member of this church in 2013, I remember so clearly she was sitting right over there where she always sit, and I was sitting over there. And she turned around and she looked at me and she said, you are going to be one of the superintendents. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? I haven't even met you anything. She said, okay, I, I figure it out. But I ran away from it, so she never caught me. I met her from there, and that's where we got bonded. We visited each other's home and always talking, conversing. She is such a spiritual character. You never talk to Sister Jeannie and not leaving her refreshed. When she found out that my husband's name was Paul, <laughs> there it goes. She was so ecstatic, not to mention Tony. <laughs> All you can hear as soon as we enter the house, my brother Paul, that's Tony, and then she becomes so jealous. She is saying, so, so what happened to me? And then she would say, bring my, my walker, my walking stick, whatever. So he ran away <laughs> because she would take it and hit him. So Tony ran away from her. Oh, my sister Lena, what about me? Same thing applies. 
And that was only because her husband's name was Paul. So it brings back, you know, all the memories to her. When she was not able to, to, um, to grocery shop on her own, her brother Paul <laughs> took over and did all the shopping for both her and Tony. They, were, they, they become so close that when the time come to shop, guess what? He could go shopping without her. That is how much he knows exactly what she needs, what she wants, and not to mention Tony. So Tony, your guava juice <laughs> will be coming to you, okay? So that is how close we all become. So if I don't go to the house a day or two, she would call and say, I haven't seen you in a long time. When are you coming? There was time when she wants to do things her way. You know that, right, Pat? <laughs> And then she would bring the conversation to me and then I would say, I don't think that's the right thing to do. She said, I don't know what I'm gonna do with you and Pat. You are my two daughters and none of you helped me to make a decision. You're always against me. So Pat, we are joined to the hip, okay? When she wants to do her own thing, no. It's not going, to, not going to work. And this is the better way. And I would say to her, this is the better way. And she would say, I have two daughters. They are both the same. Nothing I say, they agree with me. I don't know what I'm going to do with you two. All I have to do is love you. <laughs> we will truly miss Sister Jeannie. But like I say, weeping, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That is in Psalm 30. Family and friends, let's be faithful until then. I remember the night before she passed. Myself, my husband, my brother, and Norma, my sister-in-law, the hunters, we were all there. And when we went in, no conversation, she was just on her last breath. I did not call anyone to tell them. And then the morning, next morning, Pat called me to say she had passed. I said, yes, I know she was going. She was on her last breath then, but I did not want to say anything. So all we did, we sang her song, hymn number one, <laughs> and myself and Norma, we sang, and now these two ran away from us. My brother, <laughs> my brother and my husband. So it was only myself and Norma was there spending some time with her, just praying and talking and, you know, because they say it mentioned that your last, the last thing that goes from you is your hearing, right? So we just stood there and we just talked, 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 and we prayed and we sing. I knew it was her last moment. Please be faithful until then. Let us all be faithful because we will see Sister Jeannie again. The woman she was and still will be when Jesus comes, we will be with him throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. 
So let us all be faithful until then. It's rejoicing time. She left a legacy, Pat, Tony, Andrew. Andre, <laughs> and Merle. Sister Merle, and all the other families. She left, she left a legacy. I know, I get to understand that's your daughter. I never met her before, Sister Merle. Donna. Donna, yes. Yeah. But if we be faithful until then, we will spend all eternity together. Amen? Amen. So let's move on from there. Pick, pick up the, what she said, the baton and run with it. Love you all. Wow. Tony, could you place that picture, please? Oh, there we go. Greet him. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I, before we talk about Sister Jeannie, I want to talk about God's goodness to her. That lady you see here, many of you heard her name, Eva, but you haven't seen her. And that's why I placed that picture for you guys to see. Our church known her as Auntie. God has sent her from Canada. She's, uh, she's not a, of this church. Um, she's, she has been kissing me for only a year and a half, just about the time Sister Jeannie needed her. And so you hear how all the family helped Sister Jeannie? Well, God has been good to her, sent someone that is not a member. And so she's important to her because even though we helped, we are not there daily, you know, for her. And Sister Jeannie loved her, and I just want to say God is so good, on time God. So right before, she said, about two days before she died, Eva, I think we were at the hospital, and Eva was packing at that. While Sister Jean is in the midst of traveling, which we call in Belize dying, getting ready to die, Eva is preparing to go back to Canada. And that's why she's not here now. So that was sent by God. Another person that was sent by God is Maureen, the neighbor. I see you behind here, Maureen. God is good to Sister Jeannie. She's there for her, you know, doing all her sickness, washing her hair and all the other stuff. And so, so I just want to just show how good God is, and you all know how God is good to Sister Jeannie. And just to recap with, with what everybody said, I just want to um, put it in a recipe. All you all said about her, her character, in a recipe form. She used her body very well <laughs> to glorify God and to witness to us. So for this recipe, I call it Jeannie's sweetness. That's all you're going to hear about. You hear about Sister Jeannie is very sweet. Okay, we even decorate with a theme, sweetness. That's how she is. So for this recipe, you need two eyes full of compassion. Two eyeballs full of compassion. She watched out for the needy and for the physical, the, the spiritual weak person in the church. She have a compassion for them. My husband always say that you can't talk about them. Okay, so that's, she's, you also need two ears of good listening skills. And I know about that because when she come, yeah, we we'll talk to her and, and, and she would just take notes and she would continue to pray. And talking about prayer, she's a prayer warrior. And Tony, and I know you, have, you all heard this, I don't have to tell you how she told you that Tony pray me back to be speaking right now. Amen. Amen. I know she told you that. Amen. And so she teach taught Tony very well how to pray, and so I give God praise for that because here I am talking, but I wasn't able to talk. After Tony prayed, I went home and started eating and doing everything and ended up even going vacation. Wow. Amen. You will need two hands of generosity. We just had a baby shower. You know, Sister Jeannie is homebound. She can't come to church. She bought a gift, so she still is part of the church to give to this baby, so she liked to give. You will need a heart full of love. For she loves her family. Oh my goodness, we all know your names. So thank God we see your faces now. We have opportunity to see your faces. She loves her church family. If you hear Sister Jeannie said, her favorite word is, you are something else. If she tells you you are something else, it's not a bad thing. Because in Belize, someone telling you you are something else is bad. But when she says you are something else, she is fond of you, or you have, she's been grateful, or you have done something. 
uh, you know, t for her, okay? Um, you will need one head full of understanding and knowledge of God. Sabbath even my husband and I would go over there, and she just wants to be clarify the Bible. She likes to talk about the Bible. And um, another thing about her, she, if she wants to know your opinion, she would ask with a riddle. Like, for example, she was, when she was in the hospital system, Myrna, Myra bought a display of chocolate for her, and she lay on the bed and she said, Sister Card, if someone gave you a gift, would you eat it or would you put it in a display? I said, Sister Jeannie, eat it. So I gave her the chocolate that she and I ate it together. So, and she has very good memory. You know, again, Sister Ina is there. We went to visit her two days again before she died. We were there at the same time. And I, I said, Sister Jeannie, she's, she's very weak right now. What year is it? And she's trying to mumble words. And I said, I helped her. I said, 2020. And then she brought up the four. So she has very good memory. I wish I could have some of, took some of her memory. And you will need a dash of laughter. Sister Jeannie is funny to children, youths. She loves everybody. She's fun to be with. And one of my favorite moments is when she had just got out of the hospital when she got her um, foot surgery. And her hair was itching real bad. She said she couldn't sleep. And so Eva and I, we were trying to find a way to wash her hair, but we didn't want her to get all wet. And we couldn't, because she's very scared that things will touch her feet. So I said to Jajini, we're going to have to use apple cider vinegar. So we put apple cider vinegar in a spray bottle, and we spray her hair. Well, what happened? Her hair got very nappy. We call it nappy. And it was hard to clear. So um, Eva is on one side with a brush, and I'm on the other side. And she's giving us stories. And she, we were laughing, cracking up. She was just enjoying her moment. So that was my favorite time with her. So for this recipe, you sprinkle generously with kindness. In the hospital, she was so kind to those nurses. You know, she's very, very sweet, and she, did, she still did her little witnessing to them, and the nurses were kind to her as well. You will need plenty of faith. She trusts God with her life. And mixed well with lots of patience. Sister Jeannie has patience. I, when I said, Sister Jeannie, I'm going to go call the nurse for you. She said, no, 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 wait until they come in. She could be in pain, but she don't want me to go call her, and she don't want to bother the nurse. So, and she doesn't complain. You know, while she was laying there, she was like a lamb. I was like, I look at her, I said, I see her, her strength in her physical weakness at the moment of her death. I, I look at her, I says, this lady, she's something else. So spread all that over a long period of lifetime. Now I'm going to say bake at 94 degrees because 94 years she has, she was still hot for the Lord. Yeah, place in a basket full of fruit of the spirit and share with others. She has a good character, as everybody was saying. So, um, grandchildren, son, daughter, sister, cousins, neighbors, friends, church family, your sister Jean is something else. And I just pray that, we, that I'm able to see her in heaven, and I know, I, I know exactly what she's going to say when she sees me. She'll say, Sister Card, you are something else. You'll find me wherever I go. So God bless everyone. I got half a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but I just want to give God thanks as well for the family. My condolence to each one of you and the entire family. Uh, we spent time with Sister Jeannie. Just to make it brief, Sister Jeannie, one thing she did love, she loved the Lord. Anybody who's been around Sister Jeannie, you know, it, is, it just rubs off on you when you're around her because she just, and, you know, every time we, I spend time with her, we would laugh, we would share about the Bible. She got stories about the Bible. And uh, once, the second thing I would say that she loved her family. I mean, I know all the family members without seeing them. <clears throat> I, Andrea, I know about you. She talks so much about you. She talks about her, her niece, her sister, uh, that she's the only one left. And, you know, we prayed for her. She said she need. I said, what does she need? She needs her visa. She's going in. So we knew everything. <laughs> so, uh, but that's how she is. She's so, so loving. 
Tony, we spend so much time with Tony. We, we sit on the couch and we laugh and Tony, he make fun of me. <laughs> right? he, he sees me on TV and he thinks I'm funny. Right? <laughs> When she's watch, when watching the church, when I sit down and watch the church program in the evening time. But she truly loved her family. And that's the thing that I draw from her. Uh, you know, family is very special. You know, other than God, family is the next best thing that we have in this world. Amen. And so she truly loved her family. And we see that when we go there and we spend some time with her. And she loved her church family. You know, she would talk about, you know, she asked about all the church family. She would bring up stories. She will go back in history. Uh, she's even back in, um, even back in Trinidad. She will go all the way back to Trinidad and talks about her family. She talks about her husband. She talks about the business that they did together. She talks about all of those things. And I, I just sit there and I just truly enjoy uh, just letting her pour in out her, all her wisdom that you talk about, and just sharing some, just, just sharing some, some wonderful time with her. Uh, you know, we, you know, we know, we know that she's gone. But the legacy that she has left, not only for her family, but for the church family and friends who have, who have get the opportunity to grace her presence, have been amazing. And so I wish that we will continue his legacy. Say we see the patience, as Mark said, the love that she shows, that she displays. She never has nothing bad to say about anyone. She always looks for the good in, in someone, just so that she can lift them up more than to put them down. And so that's what we, I draw from her. So, but, but God bless you all. Uh, we look forward to seeing her when Christ comes and he calls all of us, you know, raise, calls us in the resurrection, all of us home. We wish that we all will be there. So I hope that you all will be there as well. Uh, it's not only this life that we worry about, but there's a life after we finish this one. Amen? Amen. So may God bless you all. I would like to extend greetings from all the members of the Mount Pleasant Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tobago. Condolences to the bereaved family, and my tribute will be in the form of a poem. Today is the day you find eternal rest. In God's embrace, we're only the best. Are called to dwell by reason unexplained, though we may grieve or love remains unchanged. The thought of parting brings tears to our eyes, a surprise that leaves our hearts in size. We may not grasp God's intricate design, yet in our souls your memory will shine. In God's own time, we'll meet once again in a world where joy and peace shall reign. Until that moment, in our hearts, you'll stay forever loved.